Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. And it's about that time. It's about time to wake up the grass. It's about time to get my pre-emergent down, a little aerate, and a little humic acid, and get things livened up around here just in time for mowing. So I get asked all the time, probably get three or four of these a day. Pete, I got such and such grass. I live here. Where do I start? What do I do? Well, I always direct them to my lawn care guide. That's always the starting place. It's a step-by-step -step, uh, instructions. It takes you from start to finish throughout an, an entire year. It tells you everything you need to do, what to do, when to do it, how much to do of it, the whole nine yards. It's a guide that I've written myself personally based off my past 18 years of experience doing lawn care. So that's always gonna be the starting point. You, you gotta have direction in order to go in the right direction. Don't that make sense? All right, so today I'm going down with my pre-emergent. My soil temperatures are pretty close. They're getting about right and uh, using prodiamine for that. And you know, I'm always a proactive lawn care guy. I never wait until the issue is at hand until I try and correct it. I've been doing it long enough. I know what's going to happen throughout the course of a year. And that's why everything I do, all my applications to my yard throughout the course of the year are set up in a proactive way. That way I tackle the situation before I get into the situation. Does that make sense? A pre-emergent is just one of those things. Uh, it's going to create a barrier on the ground uh, so that it takes care of your crabgrass before uh, it has time to get up and you see the big old yucky gnarly crabgrass plant and then you have to spray it with a post-emergent and nobody really wants to do that, right? While I'm at it, I'm going to throw some aerate and Humic 12 in the tank and these are biostimulants and both are designed uh, to help relieve compaction and if you have red clay like me uh, you have compaction issues because clay can be compacted it's a sticky material it can bind together and, and hold tight and uh, you know it's got good things it holds water and then again when it gets dry uh, it dries out completely and come, becomes rock hard and obviously if you're not getting water throughout the year to a certain extent uh, and the ground dries out, all the stuff's obsolete anyway. Um, I have noticed in the past nine years of using humic acid on my yard and 12, 14 years of using humic acid in my lawn care company that the yards rebound much, much quicker from when you get into a drought situation. So um, I used it way back in the day when one of the very first ones come out, I think it was called Actosol or something, something along those lines. And obviously it was probably, humic acid was probably available before then, but that's when I found out about it. And it was the kind of the, you know, the latest and greatest thing. And uh, I, of course I graduated to making my own humic acid and, and doing all that stuff in house and in shop. Uh, for myself and uh, then run across Green County and you know now I just buy the stuff from them and it's already pre-made and it saves me a lot of trouble. I always try and save you a little bit of room in the top of your tank so you can rinse your measuring cup out and get all that goodness in there. All right, so let's talk about calibration, why calibration is important. You want to know that you're putting the right amount of product on the right amount of square footage on the jug of a product. It will recommend you a rate per thousand, and you want to make sure that you stay within that rate. For the most part, I know a lot of people calibrate like a gallon per minute type calibration, and I just, I've never really understood why, uh, because everything you do in a yard is based off a thousand square feet. Uh, all the labels, when you, when you read, when you read this jug of Air 8 right here, and it says, uh, where does it say, uh, apply a minimum rate of six ounces per thousand square feet and a maximum rate of nine ounces per thousand square feet. It says absolutely nothing about apply a six ounces gallon per minute 
Uh, so I, that's always confused me. I know some people do it that way and that's hunky-dory. Uh, more power to you. But I like to calibrate based off a thousand square feet. I recently done away with a little bit of grass around the outskirts of my yard. So I went from 17,000 square feet down to 15,000 square feet. Uh, half of 15,000 square feet is, uh, so was that 7,500 square feet? So everything I do inside this sprayer. And so now I'm gonna teach myself to walk at a certain pace to where uh, when I start spraying, and when I end 7,500 square foot, I want to be empty, okay? That, that's the pace I need to train myself so that I can take this four gallon and cover 7,500 square feet. And since I have 15,000 square feet, which is two of the 7,500s, I do it twice, okay? I fill up all my material, put it in there, go spray, come back over here and mix up one more time, go do the other half of the yard. So what that looks like is I got, I'm trying to cover 7,500 square feet, so that's 7.5. Multiply that times nine ounces per thousand, and that's gonna be right at 67 ounces. So I would put 67 ounces of that particular product in here, and of course you have to compensate for your water you don't want to fill it up with water and then try to get your product in there it ain't gonna work i always start about halfway with water a little bit less than halfway put all my product in then finish filling it up with water in this case i run the humic 12 at nine ounces per thousand so that's another 67 ounces so that's about a gallon of product roughly right here and then the rest is going to be water and of course my pre-emergent my prodiamine but that's it's very, very minimal uh, that goes in with that. So that's one of the joys of liquid is I've got three products doing pretty much three different things and I'm applying them at one time. And yes, I know, I know, I know, I need to start filming with more daylight. I know it, the video is kind of grainy. It's the GoPro, it sucks when the, there's no sunlight. But this part of my yard right here, this little portion here, the portion there, where the crepe myrtles are at. And this portion right here, over to where the pole on the pergola is, straight across. You combine those at 7,500 square feet. So I'll spray all of that, go mix again, come back here, and you can see my line right here. It goes straight down right beside that crepe myrtle, all the way over to the road. And then this big rectangle here is my second 7,500 square foot all this in here when i walk my edges i want to make sure i get a real good coat on the edges simply because that's where the majority of the problems are going to happen throughout the year the pavement is going to get hot and when the pavement gets hot the chemical breaks down and when the chemical breaks down your control runs out and that goes back to calibration if you're not putting down the correct amount of material your control may not last as long now the way i'm able to cover this much area for four gallons is i'm spraying eight foot wide and when you cover an eight foot wide at one time it means you know you're covering a pretty wide area so that along with walking speed and all that kind of thing that's how i'm able to cover a 7500 square foot with a four gallon backpack sprayer hey you know the drill i'll link all this up in the description you can check it out if you're interested i promise i'll try to get home earlier then i know the the lighting is pretty bad uh but hey, some people work for a living you know what i'm saying so appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch uh like subscribe and share and tell all your buddies i'll check you later